So it's gonna give you two stitches along the perimeter as well as two overlapping across the edge. So then we would just hit start and out they come. It's gonna automatically pull in. It's gonna measure six inches, our laser cut Molly placards. Wow. Wow. It's Wonderland. Wonderland of stuff. And mystery. Where are we? So we are in the soft goods factory for Defender Armor. This is a new facility for us. We are no longer OEMing anything outside of the factory. We're making everything in-house, and this is the start of that facility. I'm gonna show you guys some of the machines that we use to make our plate carriers, as well as the placards and the pouches and things like that. Some of the materials we use and some of the methods that we have Absolutely, uh, to make man. this stuff. So, Looking forward to you. As I mentioned before, we're going away from a lot of the traditional webbing molly, and we're moving into laser cut molly, so we've actually just installed a new laser machine over here. Nice. You know, one of the products that we're making right now is this basic a molly placard that anyone can set up with their own pouches to put onto their plate carrier. Um, this is using the squadron laminate, which is a 1000D Cordura uh, laminated to a 500D Cordura. Okay. Giving you a 500D. So what our staff will typically do is run these sheets uh, in the laser. Once this is all set up, laser's been focused. Everything's pretty simple. We'll go through here, we'll hit start. And this is gonna start doing its thing. And this little laser's gonna run around. It's gonna cut all those little holes out and then it's gonna cut out our final shape. This file probably takes about 15 minutes or so. We're making placards here right now. Yes. How many placards could one sheet pretty much give you? So this you file and these placards, I believe we're getting 18 of these out 18. of one sheet. And that's 15 minutes. Just about, yep. We like to uh, maximize the material. Absolutely. Usage. Obviously, some of this material is kind of expensive, so we want to maximize every square inch of it as we can. Mm -hmm. So when we're developing these files in AutoCAD, we want to nest them. That's a term they use over on the other side, too. So when they're trying to get as many pieces out of a particular run of, of cutting as, as they can, they'll, they'll nest uh, the files as close together, sharing lines, things like that, so you can utilize the material and not have a lot of waste. I mean, we're usually batching these things, you know, by the hundreds, and so this thing will run all day, oh, and then yeah. we'll have a stack of stuff to, to go on to the next stage of Velcro and labels and things like that. Why did you guys choose laser cut over traditional cut and sew? It's really like a triple win. So, one, you're reducing the types of materials you have to have on hands. You're reducing weight. You're reducing cost as well. Absolutely. When it took two materials before to do what this one material can do, you now reduce weight, cost, all of those things, and especially with time as well. Traditional molly and webbing, there's a lot of physical time and labor involved in someone laying out those strips, mm -hmm. marking everything with a marker to make sure it's all gonna be in the right place where they set their bar tacks. Yeah. There's a lot of labor time involved. With this, there's it eliminates almost all of that. It's automated. Uh, it's very, very automated. And even the hands-on stuff that needs to be done after this point is very, very minimal. So it helped us from a material standpoint, a weight standpoint, and also a uh, labor standpoint as well. So it's kind of a triple triple win. I mean, triple dub. after getting into it, it's you come to a realization very quickly that, you know, why didn't we do this a long time ago? Why didn't we have this available to us a long time ago? So moving forward, pretty much all of our designs that we have are going to be incorporating some form of laser cut uh, laminate in them. Not to say that we won't still use some traditional material like some webbing here and there and things like that, but most designing will take place in a computer and it will take place using some of these laser cut materials. All right, so speaking of Molly, Traditional molly was done with webbing being bar tacked onto fabric, so you would want to use one of these machines. This is a bar tack machine. These machines are lifesavers. We use these every day in here. So what you would typically do when doing traditional military molly on here, these would be spaced every inch and a half. We didn't mark it out here for this demonstration, but I will show you what the machine does. So you would take and line this up on the, uh, on the piece of webbing, make sure you're in the center, and you let the machine do its thing. <laughs> It's going to go up and down, and it's going to zigzag back and forth. And so every, every inch and a half is the, is the standard pattern. Well, um, let me ask you, so thinking about just like weight capacities versus, you know, the bar tech system and the laser cut, are you getting more strength out of one or well, handle the way, the more weight I, loads? The way I see it and the way I've looked at it and the way we've looked at the structure of it is, you know, is, is traditional as these bar tacks are, and they're still they're still in use today. The webbing, obviously, you're still seeing gear made this way. All the strength relies, the webbing's gonna take any the, uh, any weight you can throw at it. I mean, yeah. this will take a thousand pounds easy. Mm. Your strength relies in the stitching and the, and the fabric that it's stitched to. So if you yank on this, it'll rip where the thread is, most likely it'll rip through the fabric. Mm. So your your strength point is really concentrated where that where that Threads. stitch is stuck to the fabric. Um, one of the benefits of the laser cut molly is that you don't have those bar tacks in yeah. there, and so that stress point now is kind of divided out between the rest of the fabric. So all the fabric around that one point is actually taking that mm. that load. It kind of disperses itself out, and it's not being pulled on just one specific little area. Nice. So so another you know, win for laser cut. It is. It's another <laughs> win for laser cut in, in our opinion anyway. Those freaking lasers. Laser beams on their freaking head. Moving on to our next station, 
This is called an automatic strip cutter. We actually have two of them. One is set up for cold cutting and one is set up for hot cutting. The difference being the blade that's actually gonna do the cutting of the strip. So when you need pieces, you can imagine in manufacturing, if we need pieces of Velcro to do hundreds of carriers, you're talking thousands of pieces of Velcro. No one wants to sit there and mark it by hand and cut it with scissors. There'd be inconsistency, it'd be too much labor time, all that. So these machines are worth their weight in gold. So let's say we wanted pieces that were six inches long. We would put that in here. We've got uh, five, six and how many we need. Let's say we need, you know, five of those. We type in five. And then we make sure that this is uh, just coming through the end here, which it is. So then we would just hit start and out they come. It's gonna automatically pull in. It's gonna measure six inches. It's gonna guillotine chop them and they're gonna fall into our bin. I can cut faster. <laughs> I can cut faster. So we can cut Velcro on these machines. We can cut webbing. We can cut paracord. We can cut shock cord. Uh, we can cut elastic. So anything that you can feed in there and mark out, uh, it'll cut it. Awesome. Fantastic machines. Absolutely. Wow. What else you got? All right, so uh, moving on. This machine here is a, a standard, you know, straight stitch sewing machine. This is the machine that gets used probably 90% of the time in our facility. Most of the sewing that gets done over here is gonna get done on a machine like this. These ones happen to be the newest Juki, you know, DDL 9000s that have the touch screen, everything's automated, everything's very, very consistent. We did that for consistency. So you don't have to worry about one operator having their tension too tight, one is too loose. Every product that we do is gonna be very consistent. As long as the numbers are the same on the machines, the stitches are gonna come out the same which is great. So like the piece of Velcro we cut on the uh, strip cutter over there, you know, how would we attach that to a piece of uh, Cordura? Well, we can stick it right here and do that. So we'd start in one area. And the cool thing about these machines is they have an automatic start tack and end tack to make sure that, that the beginning of that stitch has been zigzagged back and forth to be strong. Work it's like an MG42. Work way down to the end. <laughs> oh yeah, and the, this, this one's going kind of fast. And then come down to the end going to tack it and it's going to cut the thread force automatically Jeez, so every, awesome. everything's good to go. Look at that. So when you got all these things running you hear a lot of chatter and t -t 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 back and forth. <laughs> talking, like, the talking the gun. Talking, talking the gun. Talking the machine. machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, 1,000, uh, 2,000, so, 3,000. <laughs> yeah this is just uh, basic stitching of uh, Velcro onto Cordura. Moving on we can show you a, a surging machine is how we close our uh, close our plate bags. Yeah yeah, let's, yeah show it. All right, guys, uh, this machine is called an overlock serger. We use this specifically to close our plate bags. So here we have an example of what uh, one of the plate bags would be. You've got your Cordura side and your spacer mesh side, which is the side that goes against your body. We like to use uh, this machine to, to close off the inside of the bag so that when uh, plates are sliding in and out, they're, they're not rubbing up against an edge and causing any fraying or anything like that. Everything is tight and sealed together. So that's what this machine does. So they would take this, run it in this edge, this has two needles on it and it has four threads. Wow. So it's gonna give you two stitches along the perimeter as well as two overlapping across the edge. And what, that, that. and what that's gonna do is seal up this inside edge very cleanly and very strongly. The hands of a master craftsman. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, I would sew my finger <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, I would surge my hand into the body armor. It'd be a new, uh, new plate design. Nice. You just clip that off? Cut. We just cut this off. And this is what the inside of our plate bags are gonna look like. You're gonna nice. see this on the inside. You've probably seen this, this configuration of oh, thread yeah. on, the, on the inside of a t-shirt yeah, or, absolutely. you know. So this is what an overlock stitching machine will Close do. Close it all off. So that way when uh, the plate bag is then turned right side out, obviously this one doesn't have all of its accoutrement oh, on it. Okay. Just for an example. And now the plate running in and out of there is going to run along this edge mm -hmm. and not along just a bare edge and have yeah. frayed threads and things like that falling out of here. It's going to be sealed up real nice and tight. Uh, we chose to go this route instead of using a binding. That way it's just less material, less weight, uh, less bulk. Man, so much thought. You see the thought process at every step of the way. Yeah, all the way down to, uh, to how we close the bags. That's so, amazing, man. Right on, Absolutely. Man. Super cool. What else? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> All right, so this looks smooth like it's done. Pot roast is ready. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we got. Look at, that. Ooh, look at that. And then our operators would go through and they would peel all of these out. These will eventually get turned into our uh, laser cut molly placards. Very cool. They'll be folding these over, adding the Velcro, adding the hardware, label, bag it and tag it. That's super cool, man. Is this 100% accurate? 
the laser cut system? Yes. Or is there a, oh, yes. yes. Very, very accurate. Uh, anything you draw on AutoCAD, which is what we use, yeah. I mean, it's going to do it exactly to the, you know what I mean, the micrometer. I mean, it's we've not had any issues with anything being off. Everything is exactly the way it should be. Freaking lasers. Dude, yeah. this is It's so clean, man. It's so clean. This is awesome. Absolutely. So uh, that's about all I've got to show you guys today. Awesome, um, man. Come yeah. back and check us out. We're going to expand. We're going to add more people, add more machines, add more capabilities, more product. Yeah. Um, we'd love to have Absolutely. you back to check it out. Thanks. Cool, Brian. man. Well, let's head back up to the studio. Yeah, all right. Let's do it, man. Let's do it.